Ron DeSantis' team is firing back after the latest liberal media attack on the Florida governor. A new media outlet called Semaphore explains that DeSantis is, quote, and these are their words, building his own alternative conservative media ecosystem in Florida. It claims the governor has been freezing out the mainstream press while enjoying the luxury of giving interviews to outlets backed by GOP donors. The governor's press secretary tweeted this. It's not luxury to have print and corporate media stacked against you, but conservatives have to fight back and refuse to accept that biased and dishonest media are entitled to attention or access. Maybe this is what he was talking about. Ron DeSantis makes no sense to me. Uh, gun safety advocates. In any, in any, in any, not just on this by list, the way, in general. Yeah. This, uh, yeah, by the way, that was a blanket statement. Zelensky. Yeah. Is about to, is on the cusp of winning the largest land war in Europe uh, against a country ten times its size. Mm -hmm. That's that's the victory that he has at his sights. Ron DeSantis won Miami Dade County. Yeah, it's about that access, about that fighting against the, the media who aren't on your side. Uh, I, do they not think that exists? <laughs> You know, I think that the, the left, just any time there's a Republican candidate, a, a Republican leader, they're, they're, they're going to attack them regardless, regardless of the success. For example, in the case of DeSantis, where he was literally, it was a landslide, what we saw in Florida. And, the, and really the fact that he's been able to take a purple state, turn it into red, and motivate and win these critical counties like Miami-Dade County that he won by 11 points. So they don't criticize Yellen, Secretary of Treasury Yellen, for example, Janet Yellen, but definitely Ron DeSantis, he can't get, you know, they're going to absolutely criticize him uh, because they know that he's the one that stands up against the leftist media. There's so many reasons that Yellen comes out of your mouth that I'm wondering which one you mean. <laughs> Do you mean the one where she said that if you don't have abortion in this country, black right. women and the fact that they can't get abortions will hurt the economy, that, that we will be the problem? Right. And that is that an example? That, I mean, I'm that wondering could be one which one example, you mean. And the fact is that what did they say that inflation was temporary? That it was, you know, that part. That part as well. So she has brought really nothing to the table. Here you have Ron DeSantis, who has become a, a leader of the Republican Party, transformed a state, and obviously is going to be a force of nature going into the next uh, these next two years. Yeah. Emily, is it partially fear too? I mean, DeSantis is the complete opposite of, of Joe Biden. If he decides, if either one of them end up running for for the White House in 2024. I mean, I won't say he's half Biden's age, because <laughs> that would mean I can't subtract, but he's close, and he's, got, he's just got a different perspective on the electorate. I mean, he's, he's not hating half the people. Right. Uh, to me, it's the difference between a, a smartphone and an, a rotary phone. For you. <laughs> Everything <laughs> from a record player. Yeah, exactly. Hey, record, record, record players. I think are the Bible's making a comeback. They're listening to the record, like record players are one. endearing. <laughs> um, I just find, especially now, as, as you take them in, in compar to, comparison to each other, the prowess of actual leadership, of actual governing, the impact, the positive impact on people's lives, the intellectual clarity, um, the, the verbal skills, the communication skills. And I appreciate appreciate so much that his team is the same, that the reflection from the top down hits the nail on the head, says, w you're calling it a luxury? This, this is what we have to do. We right. refuse to enable this partisan left-wing media. We refuse to acknowledge that that access is denied us and somehow means that our, our value is less. We're, we're, we refuse to acknowledge, essentially, the self-aggrandizement of the left-wing media and say, oh, yes, self-proclaimed prom king and queen, I must bow at your feet. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. And they call them out one by one. They say, Do your research. You say, I haven't interviewed anywhere since 2021 with CBS, actually multiple during Hurricane Ian, Telemundo. I refuse to do your pay-by-play -play and your, uh, you know, Lincoln Project and your Democratic activists that are acting as, as regular media. They, they tick by tick lined up and actually uh, refuted everything that was in these articles. And I just find this is the tip of the iceberg. I think as, as he goes forward, it's going to get even uglier on their side. Yeah, and, and you mentioned the word luxury, Martha. Something else popped in, in that comment about what conservatives face in the media. And it's this idea that on the other side of the political aisle, there's not just a, a fangirling that goes on for Democratic candidates and lawmakers among the mainstream media at times. It's, it's a complicity 
in whatever that person's goals are, even if they're not good for the country. For instance, how many mainstream liberal-leaning journalists do you think today are going to push the president on the border and, and going to Phoenix <laughs> and, and not going to the border? No, it's not a 15-minute drive. But boy, you can learn a lot going from Phoenix to the border. There's a whole lot to see. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. And I think, you know, when I watch the comments of these people, all I can think is, you know what, it really isn't about you. It's not about what you think. It's about what the voters think. And if you travel around Florida, you're going to hear people say, uh, oh, I love our governor. I mean, I, I'm, I'm amazed at the unabashed, uncynical nature of pretty much everybody that I come across in Florida who says, you know, well, he did a great job on COVID. You know, our senior citizens were taken care of. The schools were open. Businesses were open. They increased the tax base because all these people moved there. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think, honestly, like when I see articles being written about how he's awkward and he's this and he's that, well, we'll see how all that works out when he, if he decides to run and through the primary yeah. process and all that. But what all, all that matters is what the voters think. So, you know, can he leverage, you know, the act actions that he's taken in Florida into real votes? I mean, that's, as reporters, that's what we're going to be covering. And I don't really care about this noisy stuff that, you know, people are shocked that he could be considered person of the year. I don't think it's shocking at all. Obviously, he's a rising star in his party who's gotten a ton of attention. So that means that he should be on that short list. And his state has had some tragedies. I mean, the Absolutely. Surfside Condominium put the bridges collapsed. back up and the electricity was up and running. That was the hurricane. Within days. So it's yeah. results that actually matter to voters and people on the ground. That, that's yeah. what they care about. They don't care what they're talking about around the morning Joe table. And that was right. Hurricane Ian. I'm also flashing back to the Surfside Condominium and how he oh, galvanized gosh, yes. um, rescuers from Israel yeah. to come and yeah. He was at those news conferences every day, giving everybody a bite at the apple. For right, do the job. Too. Real quickly, your yeah. thoughts. Just the, the reason they're going after him, because he's a threat. Yeah. He, won, he won by 20 points. He won independence by 20 points. He won women by 7 points. He won Hispanic voters by 14 points. He had the highest share of non-white vote for a Republican in Florida history. And on top of that, he won Palm Beach and Miami-Dade, which are Democrats. If he can do that nationally, what he did in Florida, the Democrats are finished. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.